Hey guys, it's Tori and today I'm going to be discussing my TBR for March. Specifically, I'm going to be participating for the first time ever, I think, really in her story a -thon hosted by Charlotte at Coiny Reads and I can't for the life of me remember who her co-host is, so I will make sure to put that down below both of their channels as well as at least one of the announcement videos so you can check it out if you're interested. But like I said, I haven't really participated in this readathon before. I think it's this is the third year, maybe fourth year that it's been going on. And while I've had it on my radar, I just always kind of forget about it when March comes around and I have other things I'm focused on. And right now I just feel like my reading is very much just up in the air. I'm just doing what I can do, which is probably a good thing. And so I'm a little more flexible and I feel like a readathon like this where I forget about it until it's like right up on the money and I like already have these other challenges I'm doing and stuff. I don't have those. And so I'm more able to just jump on this bandwagon, which I'm really excited about actually. Actually, this readathon is basically like what it sounds like. It is where we're focusing on women in history and I love that idea. I've always loved that idea. I think I've kind of like tried to read at least something for this readathon in the past because I think it sounds so fun. They have like a bingo board with prompts and people do really interesting videos about just women in history, books they like to read about them. So I'd like to participate a little bit more in that this year as well. But let's just jump right into these books. I didn't really look at the prompts very much. I'm just kind of assuming some of these will apply to those prompts and hopefully I'll be able to get a bingo but we'll just see and I'm just going to jump into my picks. So the first one I have here is one that I may actually finish in February but as of filming this there are 10 days left in the month and I am currently hoping to finish the book I'm currently reading today actually on President's Day and then this book is the next one I'm going to pick up so it's possible I'll finish by then but I've also been a little slow on reading and I've also been really intrigued and interested and invested in The Crown, the series on Netflix, and I am on season four. Five, I think I just started so I have like 20 episodes left of that and I've just been binge watching it so that's been taking up some of my reading time as well so anyway I don't know whether or not I'll finish this this month which is why I'm putting it on this list because it does also work for her story -a -thon, and that is The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. I've talked about this a lot in recent TBRs because first of all it was my second booktube spin pick for this last booktube spin that was hosted by Rick McDonnell and I also had it on my TBR for the hashtag we love Jenny readathon. So like I said, I hopefully will be able to get through most of it, if not all of it in February, but potentially if it goes into March, it does work for this readathon as well. So that will work great. This follows Lucrezia de' Medici, who was a woman who was infamously most likely murdered by her husband when she was very young. I've had a mixed bag with Maggie O'Farrell. I'm not sure how I'll fall on this one. This is kind of my last chance for her. She always has great premises, but the way she executes them doesn't really connect with me for some reason. So we'll see how this one goes, but I am excited to give it a chance. Next, I have the rest of these books organized in different piles. So let's start with some nonfiction, both of which were also on my hashtag we love Jenny readathon TBR. The first is The Letters of John and Abigail Adams. Even though I didn't really pay attention to the prompts for this particular readathon, I do think that one of the prompts was to read something that was like letters or journals by a real historical figure. So you get that more first person perspective. Obviously, this one includes letters by John and Abigail, but I actually really like the idea of reading their interactions back and forth while thinking about the connection to womanhood and their perception of womanhood and also just Abigail is a really strong historical female figure who I just love. So I will be reading some of these. And then the other nonfiction I have is Marie Antoinette by Antonia Fraser, again on my We Love Jenny readathon TBR that I didn't get to. But Marie Antoinette was a very interesting woman in history. She's royalty so it adds a little bit of a dash of something different compared to the other books I've already mentioned and some of the ones on this list. And I'm excited to give this a try and see how it goes. Then I have two fictional works about specific women in history. The first one is Joan by Catherine J. Chen. This follows the story of Joan of Arc, who I really don't know that much about. I know a little bit just from hearing things and reading certain things where she plays a part, like about the Wars of the Roses. But I don't know that much and I've heard pretty good things about this actually from Charlotte 
at Queenie Reads she enjoyed this particular book so hopefully I will. It's been one that's been on my radar very strongly for a long time and I just haven't really had opportunity to read it yet so we'll see if that happens this month. Then I have The Chosen by Elizabeth Lowry. This is a historical fiction. I don't know if it's actually following Emma Hardy, Thomas Hardy's wife, first wife, or if it's just following the aftermath of her passing, maybe a little bit of both, but it is very focused on her and her relationship with her husband who is this famous writer. And I kind of like the idea of reading a story. I mean, I love Thomas Hardy anyway, and so this obviously would be written in a way, it would be the type of story that would intrigue me a lot. But I also like the idea of reading about a very ordinary woman who is connected to such a famous person in history. And so I really hope I end up liking this. I know Katie from Books and Things really enjoyed this, so I'm hoping I will as well. And the final little category I have has two books in it as well. And this one is fiction works, historical fiction works that are about women, like in a more general sense. So specific groups of women that really existed, but it's kind of approaching it through a fictional lens. It will make more sense when I go through these. The first one is Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. This is following a situation that is inspired by the Ted Bundy murder, specifically when he escaped from prison and went and killed some women at a sorority house. I believe this follows a woman who basically it's not Ted Bundy it's like a fictionalized version like I said but she represents one of the girls who survived and like saw him and I think this takes a very fictional approach of like making her get revenge potentially I'm not 100% sure on that either way it's exploring real experiences that many women throughout history and today experience but specifically with this historical event and I think it would just be a really interesting thing to throw into the mix this month and just something a little different from the other historical fiction I could potentially read so I kind of like the idea of that. The other one I have that's kind of on a similar wavelength with that is The Spectacular by Fiona Davis. This one follows the Radio City Rockettes and specifically during a point which I believe was a real event where there was a bomb threat on the Radio City building and we're following a specific woman who kind of experienced that and the trauma involved and she's a much older woman but she's kind of looking back. I read the first chapter at one point and really really enjoyed it. So again another experience of the Radio City Rockettes, these women who are famous, celebrities in their own way, who experience this really traumatic event and how that impacts them and so I'm really excited to kind of throw one or both of these into the mix. Like I said I started this and really liked it and this one I just have been really interested in. So those are two books I might potentially read along with the rest of these. We'll see what happens. I always just want to get through all of these books every time I make these TBRs, but I just know my head's just not been in it. So we'll just see how many I get through, what mood I end up being in that will cause me to read whatever, whichever. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read any of these, your thoughts on them. Also, what you're planning to read for Historyathon, if you are planning on, part on participating. I feel like I should apologize for the random of this video but we made it through it. I haven't filmed like this in a minute in a couple weeks so I just my brain is all over the place but thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful reading week and I will see you next time. Bye!